subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The American company Colossal Biosciences is hoping to use the GM technology CRISPR to bring back the woolly mammoth from the dead within the next six years. The company plans to do this by modifying the Asian elephant's genes to replace some genes with that of the woolly mammoths to give the Asian elephant cold climate adaptations. This process will produce a hybrid elephant that is adapted to the Arctic tundra, just like the mammoths were about 10,000 years or so ago. One of the long-term goals of this project is to create large herds of these elephant hybrids that will roam the Arctic once again, leading to a re-establishment of grasslands that can store carbon and combat the changing climate in this region. In this video, we'll discuss what the plans for this company are, how Colossal hopes to go ahead with this project, what experts around the world have to say about it, and whether this is even a good idea in the first place. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The woolly mammoth was among the last species of mammoths to exist and was about the same size as today's African elephants. They are really, really well studied because their bodies were preserved in ice. The probably the most well understood prehistoric animal and we also have DNA from soft tissue samples because they were preserved in ice. But there isn't enough usable DNA to actually produce an embryo in any specimen so far. When woolly mammoths were alive, which was around 800,000 years ago, when they first evolved genetically to about 10,000 years ago, the earth was cold. They died at the end of the last ice age. Technically, they died towards the end of the last glacial maximum, which is when the ice sheets were at their maximum and covered North America, Northern Europe and Asia. This last glacial maximum began at about 33,000 years ago and started to decline about 14,000 years ago when the ice started to melt. At the time, the woolly mammoth ranged an area called the Mammoth Steppe. This extended across the Arctic over Northern Asia, Northern America and Northern Europe. There were lots of grasses and shrubs and herbs that grew here and the pressure at the time was high, the atmospheric pressure at this region. So the area was not really fully covered in ice or snow as some other parts of the world were. The Mammoth Steppe was the largest biome or local ecosystem on the entire planet. Woolly mammoths were adapted to the cold. They were furry, they had much smaller ears to reduce heat loss and frostbite and smaller tails for the same reason. They of course had their signature curved tusks that they used to defend themselves. Humans also interacted with woolly mammoths. Neanderthals used mammoth tusks to make tools and mammoths are actually very common in cave art. Mammoth bones were used by early humans and modern humans to construct shelters and mammoth ivory was used to create art and figurines. Humans also hunted them directly. We have found spearheads inside of mammoth fossils. They went extinct owing to many reasons, but climate change is thought to be the main one. Any animal that has a long gestation period, almost two years of pregnancy, 20 to 22 months of pregnancy, with a single calf has a rate of reproduction that is too slow to survive changes in climate. The mammoths died out slowly and over multiple islands separately. The last known woolly mammoth existed about 4,000 years ago on Wrangel Island in the Arctic at the same time that Egyptians were building the Great Pyramid. One of the persons leading this project with Colossal is George Church, who is a Harvard Med School professor and a global expert on CRISPR. In this project, the scientists use the tissue specimens of frozen mammoths and sequence them to obtain their genomes. They then dug into these genomes to understand which genes performed functions of cold adaptations. They then took those genes and used CRISPR to replace the part of the genome in Asian elephants. 
They will then put these cold adaptations into an Asian elephant's egg cell nucleus. The process is called somatic cell nuclear transfer. Electrical pulses will then stimulate fertilization and result in an embryo. If the embryo is viable, it will be transplanted into a surrogate African elephant because surrogate elephants don't always survive and the Asian elephant is endangered. The end product will be an Asian elephant that is adapted to the Arctic and these individuals will be placed in a nature reserve in Russia called the Pleistocene Park. This park is already in existence and the project is being led by Russian scientists to test the theory that repopulating an area with herbivores can restore grassland ecosystems provided that it was climate change and not overhunting that was the main cause of extinction. In the process, the hope is that there is massive biotechnology development, lots of scientific knowledge gained, especially about elephants and mammoths and prehistoric ecosystems, helpful conservation stories for other species and more. Now, there are many unknown benefits that could result from such a project as elephants are ecosystem engineers and shape the landscape physically. But there are also many problems with such an undertaking that are anticipated. Evolutionary biologist Tori Herridge highlighted some of these. A couple of her threads shall be linked below in the description. Firstly, and the most obvious one, is that the planet is getting warmer on a daily basis. And we already know that we've crossed a certain point of no return. So why would you bring back an animal that wears a sweater all the time, as Trevor Noah described it? Why would you bring back the one animal that wears a giant sweater? Secondly, the species by nature is gregarious, which means they are highly social and live in very large groups or herds. So a handful of individuals won't really work. We need a large number of these animals. Elephant pregnancies last almost two years and calves can take almost 10 years to mature. So any impact that can be seen would span over decades and decades, by which time the Arctic would be too warm anyway and we already know this. Then, what happens when these animals are exposed to novel pathogens, bacteria and viruses, especially the prehistoric ones like anthrax that are now emerging from the melting permafrost in the Arctic? There are a number of such challenges in the face of resurrecting the woolly mammoth. But the deal is that Colossal is not technically bringing back the mammoth at all, even if they are successful in this project. And this is something that they themselves also admit. People around the world and even Colossal themselves might call it de-extinction. But scientists and Colossal are clear that this is not technically de-extinction. The animal that will be created will be a chimera where the genes of an elephant are tweaked and mixed with a handful of genes from the mammoth and the elephant is the main and the resultant species here. So it's a chimeric elephant with mammoth characteristics will be a completely novel organism that has never existed on this planet before and is basically a colossal GM experiment. The company says it wants to rewild the Siberian tundra to combat the effects of climate change by restoring lost ecosystems and re-establishing Arctic grasslands. Many experts think the use of words like de-extinction and rewilding are hugely problematic because of the ethics surrounding conservation and the meaning of these words. If an animal can become de-extinct, why worry if it's going extinct? Except, you know, no animal can become de-extinct. We don't have the technology for that and it's a fairly dystopian and disturbing thought. So the use of the word de-extinction harms conservation efforts as language shifts thinking. And rewilding is a terribly difficult process. It needs millions of GM elephants to cover the region. Everyone's inspired by the popular viral story about wolves being reintroduced to the Yellowstone and altering the complete habitat and changing the course of rivers, but that's not the full picture. There were a number of unexpected and detrimental side effects to the ecosystem and the actual impact is greatly exaggerated. There will be a couple of links in the description busting the myths about the wolf reintroduction viral video. Lastly, 
We don't even know what the final elephant is going to look like and how long it can survive and what other characteristics it would have. The Arctic is a very different environment. How will that change? There is also absolutely no guarantee that the whole thing will work as we don't yet have a full understanding of the genes that govern things around teeth and digestion and hair growth and temperature regulation, fat and more especially in elephants. Additionally, it is an Asian elephant egg that is planted into a different species, which is the African elephant. We don't know how this cross species process would work too. So many experts ask, is it worth spending millions and millions on this? The objective is carbon sinking to store and protect carbon and methane in the permafrost. Many scientists and ecologists have argued that this takes large amount of money and resources away from actual conservation efforts, especially when actual elephants are dying out along with so many other animals. The Asian elephant itself is endangered. This also leads to the development of large amounts of experimental, expensive and detrimental technology targeted at removing carbon rather than expending resources to do the most impactful deed of curbing emissions right at the source.